Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk all about fasting mimicking diets, known as FMDs. We'll talk about what they are, what they involve, how they are working, their potential benefits in terms of reducing the risk factors for a variety of different diseases, and why there seems to be benefits to doing this fasting method. For example, in terms of being able to conserve energy and instead promote rejuvenation processes within cells. And then lastly, we'll look at some open questions regarding FMDs and where you can find additional information. So first then, what are fasting mimicking diets? Well, as kind of suggested by their name, they are a form of periodic fasting, coined by Dr. Folter Longo, that unlike a water-only fast, includes a plant-based caloric restricted diet containing low proteins, low sugar and high unsaturated fats that effectively mimic the same effect of doing a water-only periodic fast. And so water-only fasting and caloric restriction has been shown in a variety of different model organisms, in particular yeast, to be able to extend lifespan and protect against different age-associated diseases. However, there are some downsides with doing such a severe periodic fast that is water-only, for example, it can cause side effects such as malnourishment, rapid weight loss, reduced blood pressure and hypoglycemia, as well as exacerbating existing micronutrient deficiencies. Plus, there's the fact that going without food is quite challenging. And as Volter explains in his book The Longevity Diet, patients who were undergoing chemotherapy for the first time found it difficult to undergo such an extreme fast. And so this led Volta to make the decision to come up with an alternative strategy that could have the same effects and benefits of fasting, but still enable the consumption of foods. And so this led to the fasting mimicking diet. Now, you might be thinking, this sounds a little bit too good to be true. You get the benefits of fasting, which we'll go into later, and you still get to eat foods. However, it's not just any old food that you can eat. The fasting mimicking diet has been devised such that it can promote the effects of fasting while standardising dietary composition, providing nourishment and minimising the burden and side effects associated with water-only fasting. And so if we take a closer look at what actually the composition of the fasting mimicking diet is, you can see that the composition should involve around 9-10% to protein, 50-60% to fat that are coming mainly from unsaturated fats and 30 to 40% carbohydrates. On top of that, the diet is typically carried out for a five day period with an additional reduction in calories such that 1,100 calories are consumed on day one with 800 calories being consumed on days two to five. You can see an example of one of the diets here as I've taken from Volta's book. So the fasting mimicking diet uses the understanding and use of food combinations to exploit our body's innate ability to regenerate itself at the cellular and organ level. And for these reasons, the FMD can also be referred to as a Nutri technology. Now that sounds pretty cool. So how was this FMD actually working? Well, due to the reduction in calories and the reduction in protein in terms of its dietary composition, during the FMD, initially the glycogen in your liver will get broken down into glucose and used as fuel by the body. Once the glycogen store is used up, other molecules are used such as pyruvate, glycerol and amino acids. When these stores are depleted, the body then undergoes a so-called metabolic switch where instead it uses fatty acids as its source of energy. The breakdown of fatty acids results in the production of ketone bodies. And so higher levels of ketone bodies and low levels of glucose are changes that can be detected in the blood to show that the protective state of fasting has been entered. Now, what do I mean by this vague protective state? Well, it all comes down to the intercellular molecular signaling pathways that are affected by fasting. As you can see in this figure here, reduction of glucose that happens during this fast, in addition to the reduction of amino acids due to this being a low protein diet, reduces signaling through the mammalian target of rapamycin known as mTOR. This pathway usually promotes cellular growth and protein production within a cell. So during fasting, in addition to there also being a reduction in the levels of IGF-1, as we'll see later in some of the patient data, this instead enables the activation of sirtuins that activates cell stress responses within a cell by activating the transcription factor FOXO. And these cell stress responses include the upregulation of the process autophagy, a fundamental cellular process for degrading and recycling cellular components, and which the discovery of was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2016. Ribosomal biogenesis and cellular protection genes 
including antioxidant enzymes. And so the working hypothesis is that by having this metabolic switch, it enables the replacement of damaged components within a cell, in addition to the killing of damaged cells. And more on from that, it is thought that that is why the FMD diet needs to occur for five days to enable these changes to occur. But as important as the induction of fasting is also the refeeding process. And so this leads us onto the next question of why does the fasting mimicking diet work? Well, it's thought that it can awaken rejuvenation from within. Now again, that sounds a little bit vague, so let's go into some more detail. So when talking about rejuvenation, the first thing that should come to mind are stem cells. Stem cells are cells that can divide continuously, but also differentiate into different cells. And you can find stem cells in different tissues within your body, as they are there to help regenerate tissues and replace cells when they get lost. And there's data from various mouse studies whereby the mice have undergone cycles of this fasting mimicking diet that has shown that this FMD can affect tissue regeneration in multiple different organs. For example, it was shown that the FMD can drive self renewal of hematopoietic stem cells in the immune system, it could increase mesenchymal stem cells in the bone marrow, increase neurogenesis in brain tissue, promote expression of cells associated with muscle satellite stem cells and lead to the regeneration of insulin-producing beta cells within the pancreas. And so these different benefits in these different tissues led to the idea that FMD could be protective in human patients for a variety of different diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Clinical trials are currently in progress to understand how FMD could be used in these different diseases, but it's too early to conclude for certain at the moment that FMDs would be effective. But if we use diabetes as an example, based on the mouse data that's currently been published, this seems very promising as the idea behind FMD is that it's acting as a rejuvenation process, whereby you end up with true reversal and reactivation of these potentially dormant stem cells, as opposed to just blocking cholesterol synthesis or lowering glucose levels with statins or diabetes drugs, which may not be actually fixing the original problem. So do we actually have any evidence for this? Well, next we'll take a look at some of the human data whereby patients have undergone FMD. One of the best papers to start with is this 2017 publication, Fasting Mimicking Diet and Risk Factors for Aging Diabetes, Cancer and Cardiovascular Disease, which is the paper that summarises a randomised human clinical study involving 100 patients whereby 71 of the patients completed three FMD cycles aging from 20 to 70 years old. And what they did was they then evaluated the effects of the fasting mimicking diet on risk factors and markers for aging, cancer, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. And it's also worth pointing out that here they were doing the FMD once every month. So they did it for three months in total. And as you can see in this figure here, five to seven days after the completion of their third cycle, there was an observed reduction in body weight total body fat, blood pressure and IGF-1 in comparison to the normal diet. And you'll remember that I mentioned IGF-1 earlier in terms of activating growth pathways within a cell, so seeing a decrease in the levels by following FMD supports the fact that rejuvenation and cell stress response pathways are instead being activated. You'll notice though that there weren't significant differences in terms of reducing low density lipoprotein and also reduction of CRP, the C-reactive protein that is a marker of inflammatory diseases. However, when they stratified the different patients on the basis of them being either normal risk or at high risk for different age-related diseases, you instead can see that there is a significant decline in LDL levels and CRP in those more at risk of developing these different diseases. And so this suggests that the FMD may have more pronounced effects at high risk participants than participants who had risk factor values within the normal range. And the other piece of data that I want to show you as a cancer researcher is the study from last year that randomized 131 patients with breast cancer to either a fasting mimicking diet or their regular diet for three days prior to and during chemotherapy. And what they found was that those who underwent FMD were more often seen to have a partial response or a radiologically complete response to the chemotherapy. In addition, the FMD reduced chemotherapy-induced DNA damage in the T-cells. 
And one of the potential reasons to explain the enhanced effect of combining chemotherapy with the FMD is what Fulton terms differential stress resistance. The idea that once you've entered a starved state, the cells enter a highly protected non-growth mode, but a cancer cell will disobey this order and continue to grow. And so as you can see in this figure here, the hypothesis is that whilst chemotherapy acts on both cancer cells and normal cells, by inducing the non-growth protective state of the cells, by combining chemotherapy with FMD, it selectively targets the cancerous cells, reducing the side effects associated with chemotherapy. However, this would need to be validated in much larger clinical studies, in addition to trying to apply FMD to much larger cohorts and to other age-associated diseases. And information about upcoming clinical trials can be found on Falter's Facebook page, where you'll also find links to your favourite YouTuber. Anyway, I also think there's a lot of work that could be done to further explore the molecular mechanism underpinning especially this rejuvenation process that happens in the refeeding process post the five-day fasting. For example, it'd be interesting just to see how the epigenetic marks are changed during this process and where those changes are taking place and in what tissues. I say this only as there seems to be some evidence in mice that once they've stopped doing the FMD cycles, they continue to show benefits in terms of the molecular risk factors, hinting at a potential epigenetic memory. And this raises another point as to how often should this FMD be undertaken to be effective. Moreover, it'd be interesting to see actual biological age measurements be taken. And it'd also be interesting to see if this FMD is actually impacting senescent cells, whether it's aiding with the clearance or helping to activate the immune cells that can clear the senescent cells in the first place. But despite these open questions, the FMD really does seem quite promising, so much that I might have somehow convinced you to try it. However, I'm going to reinforce what Volta says in a review article that I covered a month ago, that although FMDs appear to be safe, their use should be limited to three times per year in healthy people with normal levels of disease risk factors until additional and long-term clinical studies demonstrating the safety of more frequent use are carried out. Basically, there's still some unknowns about the FMD, and it's also important that you do consult with your doctor before doing it, in particular because the FMD has been designed in a manner such that you're not at risk of nutritional deficiencies. But with that, I hope this video has given you a better insight into what the FMD actually is, how it's working, and why it seems to be working, in addition to some data regarding the FMD. So with that, I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. I hope you've learned something in this video, and as always, thanks for listening.